Hi, I'm Alex, and I finally got around to making this video. Uh, I made uh, a couple of drills a while before, like JSON files that you can use with uh, 11 VR game uh, to train a little bit more intensively in VR. It's quite amazing. And uh, for a while I've been wanting to make this video uh, showing myself uh, playing a couple of the drills as well, so you have an idea of what's going on. Honestly, I I might not be moving exactly. I should You should be moving. I'm also moving a little bit less because I'm worried about the cable and in general in VR we tend to move a little bit less fast. Uh, but um, this is the first video that I'll do about a couple of basic, basic exercises that beginners can start with as well. Um, if you want, you can change the speed of the ball and such uh, as you would normally do. There's a setting to slow down time a little bit. Um, so you have a bit more time in between strokes. Um, but generally, I think this pace is, is, is not that bad. Uh, let's let's take a look at uh, what it looks like when we're playing. All right. So here you see me start with a simple backend drive. Um, there's already a little bit of topspin on it, but I guess at a certain level, that's just what happens. Um, from the beginning, actually, it's good to add a little bit of topspin on all of your drives to get a little bit more control out of them. Um, but anyway, I'm showing you how to do uh, the stroke at a little bit higher level, but you should be able to at least handle the rhythm. The reason why I say to not maybe change the rhythm too fast is because if you get used to this rhythm, I mean, it will be more realistic when you're actually playing a game, right? And it also um, obliges you to make more economic strokes so you don't make really big strokes or don't move really up too much to get in position um, because then you will just be slow when you play actually a, a real game. Here right, with the forehand. So in general, even with the backhand, it's the same thing. You first start with uh, simple drives, but even in this exercise, you can already start... Um, playing with a little bit more topspin when you feel com more comfortable, so maybe about 20-30 um, simple drives and then the rest can be topspin. I would say you do know, like about 100 backhands, 100 forehands to get into the groove. It's always a good way to start your sessions. Um, you will notice that after just a couple of strokes you will get more confident. Uh, if you don't do it, you might get a bit frustrated in the first games because it's not really working as it should yet. Right, so I, I advise to always start with uh, like uh, about 100 balls, 400 balls, 100 balls backhand. Um, in the future, you can probably skip this one and, and start with uh, two backhands, two forehands. But uh, at the beginning, it's, uh, it's a good idea just to get a solid, solid grip on um, the strokes themselves. Uh, here I show as well the um, the description. So all of the exercises I actually have right now they have a description as well so if you if you uh, select one of the strokes in the in the exercise you will see the description of the full exercise and how many you need to select and all of that um, so that should help you out in setting up the right exercises they're also numbered so like um, it should should be quite straightforward so if you want to do the first exercise you just select uh, one of the strokes of the first exercise, read what it, what it says there, how many others you might need to select, which would be 1.1 and 1.2, maybe. In this case, it would just be 1.1 and then 1.2, because it's forehand and then backhand. In the case of this example, for example, well, in this drill, it's two forehands, two backhands, so you would select all four um, strokes. So it's 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and 2.4. This will help you switch a little bit uh, uh, this will help you learn how to switch between backhand and forehand, which is, I mean, seems obvious, but it always, it's always quite important. Actually, I have a, a grip that is not ideal for switching between backhand and forehand, so uh, I would advise you to do this exercise so you keep track of uh, how you're gripping the pedal and how you're changing between backhand and forehand, and if it's not slowing you down too much. The next exercise we do is um, just sim simple pushes. Um, it's the same thing. In the beginning, I would do these uh, for maybe 100 balls, uh, backhand 100 balls uh, in the forehand. It doesn't matter if you miss too much. You try to try to vary a little bit, like the amount of backspin you put on it. Maybe after a while, you can start flicking it a little bit, like I'm trying to do here, but I'm missing <laughs> a lot. Uh, but that's that's how you train. You just uh, miss, and then you start making them. 
Um, also play a lot with uh, pushing short, pushing deep to the middle, deep to the back end. So you can uh, start to use push as a, a little bit more aggressive uh, stroke than just passing the ball back. Um, okay, let's take a look at uh, forehand pushes as well in a second. And there we go. So in general, when you do pushes, you can see my real body move as well on the right top corner. Uh, for the backhand, it was the same. The idea is that you you go into the table to go to the ball, but you always come back out as well, even if you're always playing the same shot. This is to get you used to the idea of, um, of getting prepared for the next ball. You kind of have to get back to a more neutral position, otherwise you're going to be way out of position. And you're going to lose the points very quickly. Because it will just play short to your forehand, deep to your backhand, and there's no way you're going to get there if you don't take that step backwards. Now, I'm not really overdoing it in here. I'm doing just a really small step. You could actually move back quite a bit more. Um, but basically, the, the idea is to just have it in your mind, to not just stay close to the net. Because even, even in this game, I mean, the table's not really there. You could just stay in the middle of the table and then be totally out of position. All right. So... The next, the next exercise is gonna be right spinning up a, a backspin ball, which is maybe a little bit advanced already. I mean, it's easier to take the first exercise, uh, just the backhands and the forehands, and start adding a little bit of spin on top. But this is, I mean, it's a big part of the game, so it makes sense that it's there even in uh, basic drills. So the ball is coming in with a bit of backspin and I'm spinning up the ball. So you notice that my movement is less horizontal, so I'm, I, my stroke is a bit more vertical. I'm using my legs a little bit more to lift the ball as well. Like I said, you can get better examples of, of this technique being performed. But uh, I think uh, it's not a bad example to start with, for sure. So spinning up the ball. In the beginning, I, I would advise to do these separate uh, touch drills so you get used to it sometimes, of course. If you if you get tired, you can let a couple of balls fly by. There's no problem. You know, nobody's watching you. You can miss a thousand balls if you're trying to go for a really strong one. But I would advise to, to try something new for sure, but not just new stuff. Always try to, uh, to get secure as well at certain strokes. So... You can try to get secure at a really strong uh, attack, but if you're always missing and always missing, you're gonna get really frustrated. So try to start in a way that you can control and then accelerate from there. And uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun, even though it's just a robot. You'll see in a bit as well, or maybe in the advanced um, exercises video, how, how uh, intense it can be to play with uh, the ball machine. All right, so now we're in the forehand. Um, like if you, you can look at the way my legs are positioned as well. Like in the back end, I have my bat uh, straight in front of my chest. In the forehand, it's more like to the left side of my body. Like of course, I'm a left-hander, so um, that's where it's gonna be. All right, so let's go to the next exercise. All right, so this is a, an exercise that is kind of basic, but it's, well, you can also see it as a, an intermediate uh, exercise. It already allows you to move your feet a little bit, as you see in the top right corner. So this drill is basically a, a forehand to the deep forehand. Uh, you play a forehand from the middle as well, and then a forehand from the deep forehand again, and then a backhand, and you keep doing that. So the idea is that you uh, learn to make uh, small adjustments to, to reach the ball when it goes to the middle after playing a deep forehand. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very simple uh, footwork drill. All right, this is the last drill of the basic exercises. Honestly, if you take your time to do these well, I mean, you're going to start noticing after a while that you move better, you move a bit faster. Uh, just remember to always combine it with multiplayer matches as well, because it's like the randomness of, an, of a real 
player on the other side is never gonna be matched by a, a machine. I mean, it could be, but then there's a lot of other factors that are not distracting you, like you, you don't see any bats moving and all that stuff, so it's it's always gonna be a bit different. The lag is always also a bit different, at least in this game, <laughs> not in real life. Um, so always try to play against multiplayer as well, uh, in multiplayer as well, because you'll notice that it's uh, it's uh, not exactly the same. And I mean, it can be very frustrating if you've been training only in, with a ball launcher and then you go in multiplayer and nothing works, right? So you always have to see how it differs. Uh, right now, I just up the speed a little bit to show you like that you can just go a little bit faster as well. And you, after a while, if you if you feel more confident and uh, yeah, and, and get a faster reaction speed, shorter movements, all that stuff. All right. So thanks for watching, and if you like it, like, if you liked it a lot, maybe subscribe. It's not like I make a lot of videos, but when I do, you'll be notified, and you can watch it. So, well, good luck with the drills, and maybe I'll see you out there. Uh, if you are interested in um, learning a bit more about um, the strokes themselves and, and how to apply them, or how to maybe go from well, what the strokes that you're doing now and then start applying uh, real life good techniques you can always contact me also because uh, I, I give classes as well in vr if you didn't know already so good luck and let me know if you have any doubts